Y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time when we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the spirit and in truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and Singing you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and singing. All of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. I was talking to a preacher just this morning. He said to me, Brother Hamilton, I don't know what to do. We were in a meeting, and one, one preacher uh, doesn't like the song, Have a Little Talk with Jesus. Says that it is verbosely incorrect. And while the other preacher said, well, it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, don't sing it. And the rest of us are singing it. Well, the other preacher took what took to the uh, uh, aim at that and got up and walked across the meeting room. Got in the other preacher's face and said, "You're gonna need to talk to Jesus in a few minutes because I'm tired of you." <laughs> the smallest things seem to be that Satan doesn't have to do anything to us at all, but just let us be ourselves and we'll tear the church house up. Amen. This is the spirit of the opportunity. The spirit of the Ophites in our text in 3 John, in particular verse number 10, uh, is, is, is not referring to a man, but a spirit that's in the man. I believe that every one of us has been the Ophites at one time or another, if, if you tell the truth. Every one of us had that spirit that entered into us that make us feel that the church is about us and not about the cross. Well. The spirit of the Ophrates uh, uh, was so bad, the text says, uh, that he would uh, put folk out of the church. Oh, Isn't it interesting that there are more <laughs> folk in the church who are saying to people get out of the church than folk are in the church that's bringing people to, to the church. Man. That's a certain spirit that is housed by the enemy. And the enemy don't have to do anything but allow that narcissistic Allow that egotism and allow that selfishness to predict, pre, to preeminate. And, I, and let me be uh, 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 give our equal rights out because we still have sisters that think that the only green beans that taste good at the church is theirs. Mm. Y'all ought to say amen. And if you serve anybody else's green beans, uh, they'll turn up family. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh, what you mean, uh, Sister Smith is cooking the green beans? Uh, Sister Johnson is cooking green beans? Uh, for over 15 years in this church, uh, while we use a little baby, she was making green beans. Uh, and here you come, gentlemen. I quit the church uh, because of green beans. Well. That's a certain spirit that take place. And, and so when we look at this text, uh, we have to look at this text, uh, not that what's happening is new, but it is happening before our face right now. Man. And here the first problem is uh, that uh, from a, 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 a theological position, the Ophrates was either a, a leader in the church, uh, possibly a preacher, possibly an elder. We don't know, but we do know he had taken the church by storm. Here's my first point. Uh, if the preacher if the leadership cannot be an example to the people of God, what type of spirit will exist in the house of God? Well, If the preachers cannot get along, cannot care for one another, cannot love one another, cannot stop tearing down one another, how do you think the people of God and what are the people of God supposed to do? You have your Bibles with you? Listen, this is verse number 10. Will somebody read that for me? Because I want you to see the spirit of the Ophrates. And we have to paint a picture. And then this lesson will be heard because I believe that if, if Hill Street right now would help would, would, would have send uh, 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 some feeling of what the spirit of God looks like, then they know the spirit of God don't look like. And they can call it like they see it. We can avoid the spirit of the Ophrates. Uh, and instead of dying, we can start growing. Man, Amen. Man. How many of you want to grow tonight? Man. How many, how many of you still believe the church can grow in 2016? Man. How many believe that God still has power? Yes. How many of you believe that the word of God is alive and well and the Holy Spirit exists today? Man. Can you look at your neighbor and say it lives today? It lives it today. Lives today. We, we, we can overcome this stuff, but we've got to recognize, uh, first of all, what the Spirit of God looks like or what the Spirit of God don't look like so we can recognize what the Spirit of God does look like. Y'all all right? Man. All right, let me in verse 10 in the Bible says what? 
Third John 10. Third John 10. Wherefore if I come. Wherefore now I like this because John says, Wherefore if I come. The difference in, and I'm, 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 I'm a preacher, and then I want you, when you finish, I want you to go to uh, Romans 3 and 11. See, in, in, in the day, the, the older preacher, the older preacher they worked together. And so the, you had one reading from the other, and vice versa. So I'm already telling him where I want him to go, so he's going to finish that one. And then I'm going to cue him in, and I'm not even going to tell him to read. He just already know. And just go over there and start reading. Wasn't the church of Christ good back then? Man. And wasn't it one just full of Bible, full of scripture, folk working together at home in unity, and people in the audience were, were pushing and urging the preacher along, and wasn't nobody preacher hating, and wasn't nobody pew people hating. And now folk come in looking at what kind of shoes you got on, and why you get a new suit, and you must didn't give because you bought a new hat and, and she must got a boyfriend because she got a new dress and just on and on and on uh, but everything about Jesus amen, amen hallelujah thank you Jesus meet us in the dying hour amen. Amen. amen now watch this the Bible says if I, I like this he said word for if I come now hold on a minute you need to tell me now we're in the church I want you to transplant yourself and allow me through illustration to ask these questions as if we're in the church and we received a letter from John. Mm -hmm. And we've told John that there's a man or a woman or a spirit in the church that is tearing the church up. He won't let folk come in the church. He throw folk out the church. He's angry. He's bitter. He won't praise God. And, and, and the sad thing is, we, too, we don't know what to do with it because we don't want to get through out either. Well... And John sends a letter back to us tonight. And I said, Brother, Brother Evans, would you read the letter from John? And the first thing Evans says, Wherefore, if I come. Mm. Remember his deeds? Oh, man, I, but I'm trying to get over this. What you mean, if you come? <laughs> did, did, didn't, I just, didn't we just tell you what we're going through? Have, have, have you ever been going through something? And then somebody said, if I could, I would. Have you ever been, do you, do you not hear that if, if, therefore, if I come, what you mean? People are being thrown out of the church. John, what do you mean if I come? Well, one of the things that I surmise is that nobody wants to be where the Spirit of God is not. And whenever there is fighting, whenever there is hatred, Whenever you've been acting in such a way that the Spirit of God has a move and, and let you do what you do and give you over to a reprobated mind, he has to contemplate if I should even come to that place. Uh, and you know what? Sometimes I say, you know, the reason folk are not coming to church is not because of the preacher, it's not because of sisters, it's not because of the brother, it's because the Spirit of God has vacated that place. Well. And when folk walk in and see the hatred and see the disrespect and they see the honoriness and, and the rebellion toward God's Spirit, they bag up and say, no, 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 no. That can't be the church. Mm. It's important that the Spirit of God, regardless of our problem, always be represented by the people of God. Man. I don't care how upset I am, I don't care how tired I am. But I do know there's just a spirit in me that's going to find a way. I preach sermons with 105 degrees and because, because God come first. I have got up sick and preached because God called me to preach. Uh, this is not about me. Uh, I, I've been taught, I've been treated bad in front of folk and just stand there and look at them because the Spirit of God overrides my revenge and my uh, uh, upsetness and my anger. And when folk were fighting in the house, or when the ecclesia is called together, somebody forgot that you are representative of the Spirit of God. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. Uh, and there ought to be a mindset that we have uh, that whenever we're around a gap, uh, that if we got something bad to say, we're going to wait till everything, if we, we don't got prayed out, go out somewhere by ourselves and let me tell you one thing. But then when we make it together, we need to represent who? God. Represent the Spirit of God. He said, if I come, if I come, what does he say? I will, I will remember deeds, his deeds. What is he doing? Against us he's praying against us. Now hold on right there. He's praying against us. What do you mean praying against us? Praying against us. Uh, I won't get too greedy with you. But it's beyond gossip. It is praying and then enforcing the praying that you're doing. It is praying and then plotting. It is praying and then systematically designed or put together designed to take somebody out. 
it is being upset with Brother Smith uh, and calling ten other brothers and saying, avoid Brother so-and-so. Uh, it is being upset with Brother so-and-so and spreading as much malicious, malingering uh, uh, foolishness that you can spread in the name of Jesus. Uh, it is praying is the most dangerous thing that you can ever get yourself involved in because when you allow somebody to use you because he's planning you into his hatred towards somebody. He's twisting you into his hatred of personal even towards somebody and you don't even know this person and they start talking about this person and then you see that person he's twisted you into that web and all of a sudden you're looking at that person crazy and when they say something mm -hmm, and then you're walking by not speaking and when he preach I ain't saying amen brother so and so but what if he's lying what if he's lying don't you go to hell behind somebody else's plot what if it's God's will don't you lose your soul. Don't you tear up the spirit of the Lord's house and let the devil use somebody else for you to tear up the church. Amen. Well, John, I want you to talk to him. I want you to reason with him. Why don't you come in there? Well, number one, you tell me two, you can't do nothing with the offerings. Hmm. you when a man is unqualified and demands to preach, you gotta you gotta leave him to God. You don't just turn the pulpit over to him. But there's something spiritually wrong. Not mentally, spiritually wrong. Mentally, he is selfish, he is arrogant, he is proud, doubting about the law, not knowing, not, not knowing how to save himself or anybody else. But for you to know you can't study, you haven't studied, you're not qualified, you're not ready, and tear the church up, the man in the pulpit, that's the spirit of the offerings. Well, for you to sit here. And not humble enough to realize that you're not Luther Vandross. You, you can't lead all the sons. You're not, you're not Teddy Pendergraf. You're not Brother Hamilton. <laughs> I was glad to say. And insist on singing when God sends somebody with the anointing. What you mean anointing? When God sends somebody with the spirit to sing. If you don't have the spirit of the Alpha you ought to step out the way and let him sing. Amen, walls, hot rolls, bats, bumblebees, and rattlesnakes. I know I'm right about it anyway. I'm not right about it. If somebody comes along and God's anointed them to preach, you want to get out of the way and let them go preach. Man. But, but Judge Reed, what would he do? He was planning, he was prating against them. A uh -huh, malicious word. What else? And, not content and he was not content. He wasn't content what God gave him. Neither, neither, neither himself received the brethren. He wouldn't receive, when, when, God, when the Holy Spirit moved and sent for him, he wouldn't receive the brethren. He wouldn't receive the brethren. When the brethren came over and tried to talk to him, he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear I didn't want to hear that. And the scary part, folk were following him. They were following him down a malicious road of, of planning it. And when we look at the scriptures, we understand the wisest uh, of, of us all were, uh, during those times was Solomon, wisest king born in Solomon's uh, Proverbs chapter 10. And verse 3, he said, he that receive uh, the commandments of God is wise, uh, but the man uh, that practices against another man uh, shall fall. Uh, when you follow somebody who you know hates somebody, and you follow them anyway, he said, you're going to fall. I believe Jesus put this way, when the blind follow the blind, they shall both fall in the ditch. I'm not following anybody that I know purposely and maliciously try to tear down anybody. Man. If you want to lose your soul, lose it by yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10. Verse number 10, he says in a different way. He said, he that we can die, that's one thing. In other words, sometimes people look cowardly. They say one thing to somebody and say something else. But when you practice, and not only do you wink the eye, you do something about it. You call in the back room uh, well, you, when you know brother so-and-so is such a church and you say you better watch so-and-so and -so. You, you start trying to affect the work of God but you can't beat it. Uh, you spend your time tearing out and ripping that folk name when he say, she say and nobody investigates what God has to say. Uh, I want you to know he said that person that wins his eye, he causes sorrow but the person that prays shall fall. Uh, what you mean prayer? Uh, God takes special, special attention to a folk who try to mess with what he's doing in the house of God. Amen. You might not understand, but what I'm never, never going to be involved in 
a malicious isolation of anybody. I'm not going to spend my time trying to tear down something that God might be doing in somebody else's life. Uh, I'm so inspired by folk who have the spirit of God. Uh, I talked in depth to Brother Smith. Brother Smith said, I ride in my wheelchair down here on Sunday and ride. I said, Lord, we got to get somebody out to pick him up. I mean, just a commitment to carriage. While at the same time, you've got folk who got cars who decide if and when they're going to come to church uh, and think they're doing the church a favor by coming to church. Uh, yeah. And as soon as you make them mad, they'll uh -huh. quit coming to church. Uh, yep. There's something wrong with that spirit. And John says, if I come, because my bigger problem is that you are allowing him to do so. You are supporting him to do so. And I appreciate the love, but you don't need me to come down there and add to the fight. Maybe it's time for you to start standing for something, or you will fall for, anything. for everything and anything. Romans chapter 3 Verse 11 talks, gives us a, a quick uh, picture of how and, and what that spirit looks like. Can I reason with a person who's in a reprobated mind? Can I reason with a person who is about themselves? Uh, can I reason with a person who literally hate God? Uh, can I reason with a person who will walk into the house of God, sit down, refuse to say, won't say they're not supported, looking around crazy, acting like he might have put Jesus on the cross? Uh, is there any way to reach him? Why should I come? Why should you come, John? Man. Because you don't know what you're dealing with. That spirit, the person good, but the spirit needs God's confrontation brought to him. The Bible says in Romans 3, we look at this person, personality says this this type of person. In verse 11, the Bible says what? I want you to see this. There is none that there is none that, that understand. There is none that seeketh none that God. seeketh after God. And first of all, he didn't come to church looking for God. When he helped build the building, he thought he was God. Mm. Because he's been here alone with everybody, he feel like he know God better than you. What? He ain't seeking after God. He right next to God. Mm -hmm. When they asked for the right seat of God, he was sitting there and said, you can't sit in it because I'm already in it. Mm -hmm. This person has no, he has, he, he, he never, they never came to church to seek the spirit of God. They walked in the church to fight and denounce the spirit of God. And any kind of change, any kind of move, any kind of joy, any kind of hope, He says, there's none that understand nor for good way else. Uh, I want you to see this character of the spirit. <laughs> there are those that are going out, the, going out of the way. Are they going out of the way? That, uh, they, they are together. They're together? They're unprofitable. You know, it's always funny how you have men and women who want to run the church, but can't run nobody in the church. It, it's, it, that's funny to me, John. When you have folk that want to be the preacher and they can't baptize nobody, and let me stop you for identification. One of the standards that I set for my young preacher is that before you come down here and be the minister, you have to baptize somebody, somebody up there. Before you come down here, you have to do the work where you are. We have enough people who want to be preachers who we don't see the anointing of God on, who are not led by the Spirit, that just want to preach because they have a Diophantine spirit. And it's time that somebody said, wait a minute, this is the Lord, this is a spiritual house. They have become unprofitable. You couldn't get your own family to leave the house and go to church, yet you want to come in here and run the house of God. Man. The Bible says a man knows how to govern his own house. If you can't get them, them bad kids out of that house, you can't get your wife out. I've been in churches where men want to be in leadership, and his wife wouldn't even come to church. And you, and you say something to him, he tell you that, no, 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 get out of my yard, yeah, get in your house. I'm going to become it because a spiritual land man out of heaven's house. You know, y'all ought to say amen. Y'all ought to say that. If I'm meddling, y'all just say, shut up, brother. And I, and I, and I go on. They become unprofitable. What do you mean, profitable? If you can't teach a class, you can't lead folk to baptism and God give the increase. You can't get respect from your house. The community don't respect you. Your own family don't respect you. People in the church just get frustrated when you come around. What exactly would you want to leave the church to do? What exactly is your calling? And if you can't see that, then you're blind and cannot see it for off. If you can't bring the spirit of love in the house, and you come and folk just tighten up. If you come and all you do is fuss and fight and angry and all in front of folk children, what is spirit and do you want to teach the church? Because it won't be long until the opportunity spirit starts moving that the whole church starts fighting each other. Man. And Paul put it this and said, but be careful. In Galatians chapter 5, in 15, he said, if you bite, and you devour one another, be careful 
that you don't consume one another. When those two older preachers were about to fight, and that nigga, one of the things they say, he said, you've been messing with me for 30 years. They had been consumed with hatred one toward another. They had been violating God's law. When God says in Matthew chapter 5, when you come into the house of God, and you remember you have an all against your brother, leave your gift at the altar, go be reconciled with your brother, then come say, then come preach, then come talk to me. What you can do, you ought to set down every preacher who is not an example of love and production in the house of God, yeah. including myself. And I say it ten times, and I, and I bang it because there's, there's enough of these doctrine spirits that are walking around here that we ought to be ashamed of ourselves for following them. We ought to be ashamed because he said, if I be lifted up, if the Spirit of God be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. He said, not, not of hatred, be lifted, but he listened to this. This is that I'm very Did he say they are prophets? They're good doing good. They don't do good? No, not one. Not one of them. Their throat is an open sepulchre. Their mouth is an open sepulchre. You know, Mama, you tell me, you ain't got something good to say. Don't say nothing at all. Don't say nothing at all. What I know about Brother Alvin might be true. But if it does not profit, if it does not help, I'd have shut my mouth. And the person I need to talk to is not Brother So and so, but the person I need to be talking to is Brother Alvin. Yes, the Bible is right. Brother, and I speak to them that know the law. He said, let me tell you something. Uh, let me go to Galatians chapter 6 and, and verse number 1. Brother, if a brother be overtaken no, in a fault, restore. ye which are spiritual, yes, sir. restore such a one. Yeah. Don't run from so Restore him. Love him. Bring him back. If he'll come back, put his arms around him. Show folk how to love him. Stand with him in adversity. Bear one another burden. Cut this stuff out. Quit letting hatred run rampant. Tell folk you love him. Make a big parade of him. He was lost, but now he's found. And I don't know what to talk about. We got through that scripture out of the Bible. Mm. And we call the church in Christ. And so what do we do, church? What do we do? All this bitterness. We come to church. Folk don't really want to speak. Old fake handshakes. Leaving the spirit in the church, they shake your hand like they got sugar in them. Barely, oh, don't, don't you ever shake my hand soft like that. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> they shake your hand, won't even look at you. You get up, you come in, but you can see the spirit in Bible class. You sit in Bible class, and teacher trying to teach you. You sit up making crack pots from the pew while you're trying to teach you. Folk melting each other, we know stuff about each other. Instead of mourning, instead of praying that God help them, we sit out there saying, mm hmm. That wasn't what you were saying last night, was it, brother? Uh-huh. Sister, that ain't what you were doing with Brother Billy the other night. Uh-huh. All up in class, uh, calling that church. Uh, Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Uh, messing with folk uh, that can't even draw service. Uh, preachers say something uh, about going to the nightclub and everybody look at the person. They know it's at the nightclub uh, and let everybody know exactly what it might be. To but it sets up a Diophrates spirit in the house of God. And we begin to wonder, why is the church not growing? Because there's a spirit of hate, of deception, of envy, of jealousy in the house of God. And I don't know how to handle it because I'm not used to folk not saying what they mean to me, what they say. It might be my problem. I say exactly what I mean. And folks know how to deal with being honest with them. You know, I say exactly how I feel about something. And, 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 and when we sit back and we watch over and over again, the obvious leads to power, to politics. Uh, one, 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 one person uh, came out of a softball field, ran into a church, made himself an elder and a preacher, and nobody said a word. In San Diego right now, we have four congregations who are now at an instrument of music in the church, uh, and they'll stand up at a meeting and say, I'm part of the foundation of the Church of Christ Foundation. We're going to set, set a picnic, and, and then nobody said a word. And everybody know that they're doing what they're doing, but they spend all the energy saying, watch the walk, the bad guys over there. It's not spiritual. The opportunities want you to believe that it's spiritual, but it's personal. In church, whenever you let that spirit in here, when you let that spirit, you have just you you might as well have told God, we got it from here. The next minister that you have, you make sure that he comes with the spirit of God. You make sure he has.
has the anointing of God in his life. You take your time, you pray, you pray, you say, God help us, because if you get the wrong person in here, you'll have an empty bank account in a few months. You get the wrong person in here, folks will be leaving, not coming. If he's not doing a job before he's the preacher, he don't need to be the preacher, hoping he'll do the job. Y'all don't need that, did you? You want to see the preacher being anointed by God. What you mean anointed by God? First Peter chapter 5, verse 11, he says, now listen, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. He ought, he ought not come in a stumble and bumbling. He come in a piece of paper in his head with his head down, looking like he ain't never seen a Bible before. He ought to sit up on it. If he's going to preach, he needs to preach as the very breath of God. He ought to be able to help you understand yourself what God has for you and the next man. And he ought to be generated in love. And people say, God says that when folks see the love operating in the church, they all come running to the house of God. But when the spirit of the opportunities get there, as soon as they run in, he run them out. They run them right out. Cause when they come in, ooh, I love the preacher, but boy, they sure don't like that preacher. You see, they looking at that nigga killing. I was watching an African documentary, and man went over there, and I forget his name. I love watching research. He was over trying to teach them uh, some modern ways of living. He writes stuff on the board, and the witch doctor was sitting with their legs crossed, and they were looking at him. They kept licking their lips, and he, he's sitting there in the, in the tribe, and he keep teaching and. Finally said, uh, I need to tell you something. He said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, what do you think they're thinking right now? And he said, I won't tell you. What they're thinking right now while you're teaching is how to get you in that pot. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's nothing worse as a preacher to be out preaching and hand hunters in the pews trying to figure out how to get you in the pot. Amen. 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 Oh, my God's word been preached. Y'all, do y'all understand that? Y'all get everybody all right? I know, well, preacher, you know, you know, tell us something, tell us something good. I'm glad you asked that question. See, I'll be ready to go home. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all share this moment of communion, and, and I'm giving you time back uh, because I just want to show you the spirit. And I want to show you the spirit, and you get the spirit, and, 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 and that'll, that'll stop the church from being like a cemetery. I don't know who told y'all not to shout, but I want to free you tonight. I, if God been good to you, can you can just two or three of you say thank you, Jesus, just as loud as you can right now? Can two or three of you say thank you, Jesus? Right, you free, you can say it. Thank you. Jesus. That's a good one. You can do better than that. Just three of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, man. Baby, you free. You, you can say thank you, Jesus, because God wants to hear you say thank. You. That's praise from your mouth. Therefore, let us offer continuous praise unto God. That is with the fruit of our lips. That has nothing to do with song service or no one song leader. It is the praise that comes to your mouth that you ought to continually in bad times, in persecution, every now and again you ought to say thank you, Jesus, when you're in employment line. You ought to say, this man said thank you, Jesus, that he was sitting there, he was talking about the things he was going through. But then he said, I just thank God. Man. I thank God that I'm here. That moved me. That helped me. I got stuff I'm going through, but to hear somebody say, by the end of wheelchair, coming three miles of church, trying to get here, I just thank God I was able to make it here. Amen. If you can thank God, can you just say thank you, Jesus, for making it here? Amen. Thank you. When we get this type of spirit in the house.